there are some additional things that one can do for relieving hangover. And one of them is to be very thoughtful about what sorts of alcohol one consumes. So I find this interesting. There have actually been studies of which types of alcohol lead to the greatest hangovers. There's actually a lot of legend and lore about this uh, as well. Some people have said, for instance, that drinks that have a high sugar content lead to greater hangovers. Turns out that's not the case, or at least that's not what the science points to. If you look at the expected hangover severity, what you find is that at the bottom end of the scale, there's a drink that I'm not gonna tell you for the moment, but what you find is that near it is, for instance, beer. The, the consumption of beer, provided it is not overconsumption, right? It's not far beyond the tolerance of the individual. So there's one or two beers, is less likely to cause a hangover than say whiskey. And a glass of whiskey, or I should, you know, not as much whiskey as beer, of course, but a glass of whiskey, for instance, is more likely to cause hangover than gin is, it turns out. Again, this is what's fallen out of the data. And yet a glass of rum or red wine is more likely to cause a hangover than any of the other things I've mentioned so far. At the top, top, top of the list of drinks that induce hangover is brandy. And one could then say, well, doesn't brandy have a lot of sugar? Maybe it's the sugar that's causing hangovers. And this is something that's been, again, discussed over and over that people say, oh, it's the high sugar drinks that cause hangover. It turns out, however, that when one looks at drinks, alcoholic drinks and sugar content and hangover, at the very bottom of the list is, and gosh, this makes me cringe just to think about, is ethanol diluted in orange juice. Ugh. I can't believe people actually drink this, but ethanol diluted in orange juice. So this is not vodka and orange juice, okay? Vodka was third on the list from the bottom of drinks that induce hangover. Again, this is within amounts that are comfortable for the person to drink, that they have enough experience with or that they have the body weight to tolerate without getting very, very drunk. So the point is that if it were sugar that's causing hangover, well then the ethanol and dilute in orange juice would probably be at the top of the list in, to, in terms of inducing hangover, but it's not, it's at the bottom of the list and brandy is at the top of the list. So what you find is that what scales from ethanol dilute in orange juice to beer, to vodka, to gin, here I'm ascending the hierarchy of things that cause hangover, gin, white wine, whiskey, rum, red wine, and then brandy at the peak, it's sort of the world heavyweight champion of hangover inducing drinks. Well, what's increasing are congeners within those drinks. Congeners are things like nitrites and other substances that give alcohol its distinctive flavor and that also lead to some of the inebriating effects of alcohol. Now then you ask, okay, well, what is it that these congeners are doing and what are these nitrites doing? And guess what? While they do have effects on the brain and on other tissues, their main effects are to disrupt the gut microbiome. So what this points to again, is that having a healthy gut microbiome and perhaps ensuring that you bolster your gut microbiome the day after drinking is going to be especially important for warding off hangover, or at least reducing the effects of hangover or the symptoms of hangover or both. I would love to see a study on this. I could imagine designing the study myself, although this isn't really the sorts of things my laboratory does, but you can imagine some people getting probiotic and prebiotic, some regularly, some just after drinking or low sugar fermented foods and see what the effects are in terms of subjective effects of hangover, but also some physiological measures. I think the way to think about hangover overall is that again, it represents a multifaceted, multi-organ, multi-tissue phenomenon. And the best way to deal with it is as a multi-cell, multi-tissue, multi-chemical phenomenon. And before I listed off some of the things that one could do in order to adjust hangover, again, the one that comes out at the top of that list, I believe, at least based on my read of the data, is to support the gut microbiome and certainly not to ingest more alcohol. And I suppose if we were to get really honest with one another and ask what's the best way to avoid a hangover, it would be to not drink in the first place.